That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, uh, hello, hello. That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. That's one of our guys in his acting. Yes, I that's just can't me. believe that, that I did that. I'm, I am uh, such an idiot. That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> And that's Bob Kelly, who's joining the program today. Yes. The, the fruitiest sound a man can make. Doesn't that just sound like... <laughs> the biggest problem with those clips is that nobody knows who they are. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Thank God we didn't describe those clips. Go check it out, the Opie and Anthony Show, the only virus spreading across America. It's Whip Em Out Wednesday. Yes, it is. Wow. For short. Well, for short. <laughs> and we'll explain Whip Em Out Wednesday in a little while. We'll especially explain it to West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach, apparently. Um, 30 people down there love it. Apparently, they're a little slow. They're a little slow. They're a little slow. That's my new character. I'm not going to. Uh, Thank I, you. I am not going to blame the West Palm Beach people. No, I'm not blaming the audience at no, all. Because they're not a little slow. We're on uh, jumping the gun. We're on WPBZ 1031 FM, West Palm Beach. Hello, West Palm. Good morning. Wake up. And Wake up with Opie and Anthony. Maybe that's the type of radio he wants us to do. And some of the people that uh, you know work for the station might be a little slow. They might be a little slow. I don't get it. I don't get it. We might have to explain things. Yeah. We have to really explain things. Because someone uh, that works for the station is convinced that the listeners of West Palm Beach don't know what Whip Em Out Wednesday is. Or anything we do, for that matter, because we talk like everyone knows who we are. Oh, all right. Well, now we got uh, to. Now we have to. Yeah. I, I, I... <laughs> See, your boys, Opie and Anthony and Jim Norton, we bust our balls every day for this fine syndicated radio program that's heard on XM and heard on about uh, what? Uh, oh, about... 10 or 11 uh, commercial radio stations. Right. And we're kicking ass everywhere so far. Yeah. And uh, we kind of get some uh, some uh, research, uh, some survey questions answered from all the markets. And and not the people, though, not the uh, audience. No, just from uh, the people that are working at the stations. The people in charge, the program directors and, and things as such. You know, s- s- suits. Yeah, good old suits. 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 I'm trying to uh, get an example. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Like, for example, Dallas. They would like to have Opie or Jim Norton on with their midday show to promote the show. That makes perfect sense. You guys uh, down there, you know. Uh, Pugs and Kelly. Kelly, and Kelly friends uh-huh. with them. Be on the show. That's a nice sure. cross promotion. They also want the comedy tour to go to Dallas. All right. Of course. So they give us these things that, uh, you suggestions. know. Suggestions. Suggestions and stuff that help the program, obviously. BCN, forget about it. I mean, it's amazing the stuff they, uh, they're they talking about and, uh, you know, um, and the info they're giving us. Okay, I'm just going through this really fast. Sorry. And then Detroit, just completely motivated. And uh, they want billboards in Detroit. Mm-hmm. They believe in the Opie and Anthony show, but they feel like, you know, uh, it's a new it's a new market for us. So. So they would like a little help from the company, some sure. billboards, things like that, okay? And that's a, that's a great way to look at it. Hey, they're new to the market. Uh, let's get some advertising uh, that, that lets people know what these guys are all about in a quick billboard or right. some kind of line on a, a bus poster or something like that. Philly right. wants a live broadcast. They want an appearance, a concert with the guys before the big September event, mm-hmm. you know, the, before the big comedy event event. Uh, uh, that we're going to do in the Philly area. Right. They also want us on Barsky's show or Kid Chris's show. Mm-hmm. These are requests coming in from the markets, okay? And it goes on and on. Very, very positive in general. Even in the even in the cities we never broadcast it to. Pittsburgh, nothing but positive feedback. And I'm very excited to have us on WKRZ, 93.7 or 93.7. Excited to be there, Opie. Very excited, okay? And then Dallas, you know, sent in the... Uh, the uh, the bus uh, boards, whatever they're called, oh. 
the kiosks that are all over the Dallas area. So so we get a, this packet. It just it, it just begun, but the first packet is in my hand. Yeah, and uh, man, very disturbing looking at the West Palm Beach page. I got to tell you, it's oh a lot my different. God. It's a lot different than all the other pages. All the other pages were these nice, constructive, and. Uh, uh, just uh, happy ways Very to positive. make this show positive. Mm -hmm. Not that we're looking, you know. If you have, and if you have a reason to be negative about the show, uh, or, or, or you know what what you need, that's fine. But has have there have there been any reasons yet? I don't know. We've been on a little over a month. About a month, a little over a month. And there's promos for the Opie and Anthony show that run after we get off the air, right? Yeah. And all the other cities, they are just pounding the Opie and Anthony promos mm -hmm. like crazy. So one of the big wigs here in New York that oversees all of this in yeah. programming kind of looked a little deeper into the West Palm situation because they they brought up some stuff and noticed they're not running the Opie and Anthony promo as as heavy as all the other stations. What? What's, what <laughs> why? Which completely goes against some of the stuff this guy is trying to tell us. Your morning show is supposed to be your anchor. So uh, anchor. So West Palm Beach, under the I'm not even I'm not gonna call the guy out. That's fine. Not I, yet, because we have we don't really know him. Right. Maybe he's maybe he's uh, maybe he is passionate and into it. Maybe he isn't. I don't know yet. To be honest with you, don't know. We don't know. So we'll just keep it at that. But uh, issues, questions you have of it, of any programming or promotional concerns mm -hmm. with the Opie and Anthony show, and uh, the answer here is biggest problem with the show is that they talk like everyone knows who they are. Well, what what are we supposed to do? Every just introduce ourselves every, every three minutes. Every three minutes, right? Or every time we uh, get a, a new syndicated market, we start over. We we review tapes at night of our first few shows and just do that again, so everyone's in on the inside jokes and everything else. Does this guy understand that any talk show in this genre? is based on people catching on over time. Something catches their interest enough to make them kind of listen to the show. And eventually we do get to things and you kind of... It's like picking up a, a dopey... I'll use, I'll use a woman's analogy for this guy. I'll use a woman's analogy. Like a soap opera. What do you think? People have to rewind to 1955 when some of these things started to get who the characters are? You sit down for a few days, and you know exactly who everyone is and what they're doing. You got to gotta invest in it. Yeah, of That's course. That's talking. You got to invest in it. That's Shut up. Talking. No, this Jim, is me Jimmy over is here. narrating who is talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit sad. I'm Frank. Oh. Hey, Frank. That's a character now, uh, West Palm guy. That's Frank the Frowning Guy. Yeah, he makes an appearance on the show. Well, he just started making an appearance on the show late yesterday. Don't take that too seriously, because that's a sarcastic... Thing because other stations uh, uh, shows come up with wacky characters. Now we wouldn't honestly do that because our show isn't really conducive to right. the stupid character thing. But we goof on that character, and that's why Jimmy came up with that character. Let let me explain that. It was just Jim Norton pretending to be Frank the Right, Hunter. because uh, the fear I have is that someone's going to hear that and not knowing the show because we haven't explained it, actually think that we have a character as lame as the frowning guy. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. They tell me. <laughs> See, he's doing the frowning guy, but please, please don't take that seriously. It's very sarcastic. I'm not really sad in real life. No. So, um, the biggest problem with the show is that they talk oh. like everyone knows who they are. <laughs> Ass. Any any TV show or any talk show on the radio, you got to invest some time in it. Right. And a little more than than a month, <laughs> mind you. Right. And then it says, in this market, no one knows who they are, and response to the show has been less than enthusiastic. Let me tell you about another city <laughs> that didn't know who we were. We worked at uh, WNEW here in New York. That's right. We had uh, started doing uh, well in uh, New York City, but outside of New York City, uh, aside from Boston, but we weren't being, being broadcast there. No one knew who we, we were. No one. Uh, a little city you might have heard of called... <laughs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. We syndicated into Philly. And uh, they didn't know who we were from a hole in the wall. And in, in time, in very quick time, very short time, uh, we were huge there. And people loved the show. Because people are smart. This guy's got people like pegged as idiots. 
They figure it out. We know radio too. We're, we're, we're you know, we're not that stupid. We know how to present things in a way where people will catch on. But this guy's like petrified that no one knows who we are. Yeah, I'll tell you who they did know who who it was. Let me give you a little name of somebody that everyone in this country uh -oh. probably knew. David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth. Pretty much a household name. You mention his name, people knew who he was. Would you like him back? You want him back? Name recognition. No one was listening. You jackass. Oh, I can't take this guy. I read that. I was infuriated yesterday. You're so right, Opie. No, this is Anthony speaking <laughs> now, Way just to, to let everybody know. That's true, then. Oh, <laughs> look, don't, look, don't confuse everybody. Everyone knows you're Opie. The All people right. that have been listening to the show for many years know that That's you're Opie. Okay. <laughs> oh, it just annoyed me. And what annoyed me most is is because there has been no. Uh, no little litmus test as to how well we are doing down there. That's way too early. It's too early. I mean, uh, the same thing happened in Cleveland. Yeah. Because then you could argue, well, New York and Philly, they're relatively close, so there might be some kind of crossover audience mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, heard of us in New York and kind of live, uh, you know, far enough to pick up WISP, the station we are on. Yeah. What about but then you take the Cleveland situation. Cleveland. And we never explained the show. We just started being syndicated to Cleveland and completely mopped up yep. within three to four months. We never had to sit and and and, and spend uh, an entire show just explaining what we do, explaining the characters, yeah. explaining the the myself, Anthony, and Jim to the to the listeners. How about uh, our Pittsburgh. good friends in Pittsburgh? Brand new market for us. I don't know. It's from a hole in the wall. And so far, so good. Ratings came out nice. Nice start for the Opie and Anthony show. Thrilled because we 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 peak in interest. Yeah, people are like, oh, this is kind of different. This is interesting. I'm going to invest in the show and, and learn about it a little bit. Well, they're giving I, th I think it speaks volumes when you write in this market. No one knows who they are, and response to the show has been less than enthusiastic. Let me tell you what that it. means too. Let me tell you what less than enthusiastic means because every market we've ever gone into, the first month, two, sometimes three is less than enthusiastic. We could play phone calls in some of our most successful markets from the first couple of months, and it is nothing but negativity. Because if this guy knows radio, which, again, I don't know this guy from a hole in the wall. I don't know how long he's been in radio. I don't know what he does. I don't know this Merle. <laughs> uh, that's from and Godfather 2. And then, yeah, right. It's from Godfather. Uh, uh, please, you know, Godfather movies. So please uh, understand that. You, you want to uh, pop it in and get to that part? I'll wait. We'll explain, it. We'll explain <laughs> everything. It's Italian <laughs> Shire coming with, with Troy Donahue, and they're talking to Michael. Right. <laughs> so that we just kind of made reference to that. We really didn't yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. That's everything yeah. on my left. Maybe we should have the listeners explain the show for West Palm Beach. So he, um, he doesn't know uh, uh, us. We don't know him. What the? I could profile. What's his deal? I could easily profile the guy. God damn, I lost my train of thought, and I had something good. No, you didn't. On this guy. No, you I didn't. I certainly did no, you did. did. No, everywhere you did. we go, we have negative phone calls. Yes, negativity. Like right. Thank you, Jimmy. Sure, ne we have negativity on the phones. How many times have we gotten this? Why didn't you let him wallow? This isn't what fan? I'm used to. I don't like this. Put back on whatever was on because I don't like this because it's different that's coming out of my speakers. So he must have gotten uh, uh, a few of those calls and all of a sudden the negativity is all he's hearing. I'll sh I will we'll play your calls from NEW. One of our most successful uh, markets, Philly, same thing. At the beginning, you get that. And if you knew anything about radio, especially talk radio, that's what you get at the beginning a lot of times. You get people that uh, don't uh, don't like change. Then after a while, they start listening. This is not what I'm used to. <laughs> this is different from what my normal daily experience is. <laughs> Be like everything else in my life. <laughs> there you go. Brian Regan. Right? When we first were at NEW. That was the first time he was on our show. And we were fielding calls, and it was nothing but complaint calls. And uh, Brian uh, explained why people will complain. This is not what I'm used to. So moving on, there's a couple other things here. Uh, to date, we have spent six hours in high-traffic areas handing out WOW stickers. 
They have given out less than 30 in two weeks. <laughs> and then he writes very dramatically with an exclamation point. Oh, well, then Jimmy and, should read it. And quotations. Wait, Jimmy it, should read it if it, it has exclamation, exclamation point. point. I try to read it as an, excla an exclamation point. Yeah, we better explain to West Palm Beach. Yeah, when, explain that bit. When we have to read stuff with exclamation points, Jimmy reads them. An exclamation point. It's uh, it's under 4B. Because okay. you can't we, read we, uh, the, uh, things with exclamation points the same way you would read them if it just had a period. Read 4B. So Jimmy does it uh, An perfectly. An exclamation point is like a long line with a period <laughs> under it. <laughs> uh, yes, to, for, for read, the people down there. Read that whole section again. Uh, 4B. To date, we have spent six hours in high traffic areas handing out wow stickers. They've given out less than 30 in two weeks, and then in quotes, very frightening. <laughs> See, hence the exclamation points. Is He's exclaiming. Frightening. <laughs> very frightening. Frightening. Can Maybe some math, please. Wait, six hours right. in two weeks. Now let's go weekdays. That's 10 weekdays in two weeks. Uh huh. Uh, that's six hours. In ten working days in high volume. Now, how many hours is that a day? Is, is that per day? No, they just did six hours in high traffic. Total areas. for two weeks. Total. Yeah, yeah. So that's less than uh, an hour a day in high traffic. And they see they're giving out thirty. Way less. That's what is it? Five an hour they've given out. That's one every twelve minutes. Maybe they just right. got very shy uh, <laughs> street teams. Hi, would you like it? No. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh sorry, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know who the show is would, or what they do. Would you like to put this? I no. I would. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll, go away. I'll go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't look at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was in that uh, situation back in the day, of course. And it, you know, if you if you're not motivated enough, you know, you're not you're, you're going to hang out, smoke a cigarette, and throw all the wow stickers in a garbage pail, and then go back to the station and, and tell them, yeah, I gave them all out. It was unbelievable out there. Can yeah. someone do some math for me, please? Ten days, six hours. How much time is that a day? I just wanted. I'm just curious. I can't do the math fast. It's got to be something like uh, under, 40 um, yeah, four like forty minutes, I would think, mm. per day, a day, something like that, something so like that. Yeah. See, uh, for the people in West Palm, we're not good at math. I was going to say, 36, 36 that's close yeah, he'd to 40. Okay, 36 right, Mr. Minutes. Spock, Jesus. So a little over Mr. a half Spock hour. Mr. Spock character on Star Trek. A little uh, over Spock a half hour logical. a day. <laughs> and it's not really him. It's just something that resembles him, so you call him Right. That. But you know, we, we really don't mean that. It's not really Mr. Spock. Right, absolutely On the show. Leonard Nimoy has never been on this show. Although right. we'd love to have him. And, and maybe you should, like, you know, be, be motivated enough to get your wow sticker stops uh, to the point where people want to show up. For example, WYSP is doing a sticker stop today at Risque Video um, starting at 8.30 this morning. YSP, ready for this, will be, be uh -huh. giving away 100 pair of tickets for their Family Values Tour September 15th in Philadelphia. I'm sure people are going to be grabbing up uh, stickers then. And 20 pair of OzFest tickets August 4th, both at the Tweeter Center. It's risque video starting at 8.30 this morning. There you go. I think there's going to be a lot of people showing up there because they're... Are those high traffic areas? Because they're motivated and they, they understand how to get people out to pick yeah. up the wow sticker. You know what I want an explanation of? Why can't we write out a little sheet for the, and send it down to this guy like he wrote a sheet for us uh, and sent it up here? I want to write down a little sheet. What is a high traffic area? Where is it? How are these stickers given out? How are people approached? Was it something like a club? Was it an event? Was it promoted? There's a guy dressed like Hitler, goose, <laughs> goose stepping the stickers over. <laughs> In, yeah, purely Florida. Jewish neighborhoods. Yeah, well, Florida, okay, a Jewish state. <laughs> My math was right, by the way. 30 stickers in 10 days, uh, 36 minutes. It's one every 12 minutes. <laughs> one every 12 wow, minutes. Wow, that That's three a day. I don't wow. Think that's a very good ratio. That was Frank the Frowner. That wasn't really me. So. What was it? <laughs> Frank the Frowner saying three per day is a very good ratio. <laughs> Takes more muscles. To frown and to smile and tell me. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I love Frank the frowning guy. <laughs> so Even a major... Not to be taken seriously. Major please. request. Here we go. Uh, marketing money. If we do not market this show properly in West Palm Beach, you can forget it. <laughs> you can Just, forget it? You can forget it, buddy. We are no better off today than we were a few months ago. David Lee Roth scared off a large portion of our audience, and they have not returned. We need to let these people know about ONA ASAP. And does he have an insight? That's, that's accurate. Does yeah. he have an insight as to uh, where is he getting his information that they haven't returned? Uh, maybe uh, some call-out research. Who knows? Call-out research. 
And then he ends it with, this is not an option. It's mandatory. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting this on Pal Talk. Opie and Anthony aren't anywhere to be found on the West Palm Beach homepage. Let's go check that out right away. Please, uh, please uh, check that. Well, it says because because I have this guy's name on uh, uh, Pal Talk. If you're wrong, if you're sending erroneous information to me, you will be not only bounced for the day. I will completely ban you. You, know you will never be on our. Uh, you know what? We got to keep Pal this Talk. fair because. Uh... Under three, detailed confirmation of updated content for website. The website address is www.buzz103.com, where O and A are featured on the front page. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we got to keep it fair. All right. It's there. It's there. Here's what I do when uh, somebody does something bad. We have Pal Talk, which is a video feed into our studio uh, by you. If you have a camera, you can uh, pop in. We can watch what you're doing. But... Better yet, we have cameras here in the studio. So if you go to Pal Talk, you can look at what we're doing here in the studio whenever we got something going on or we're just hanging out. We got cameras. They're all over the place. For free, you can watch For free. us. You just watch us. And this this guy on Pal Talk, Knights, T, what is it? Knight STR 75 gave poor information. He lied. So now I will click on his name, bounce. He is gone. And now he will go to the banning page. I will do that. I will ban him. All right. And finally, because we got to take a break here, to let people know about WoW, we we, we uh, created a promo to explain it. I need that promo. Because I guess we didn't explain WoW Whip Him Out Wednesday uh, uh -huh. good enough, even though we explain it every Wednesday. We every Wednesday. Promos. Basically, you get a WoW bumper sticker, you throw it on your car, and there are girls out there that will flash you if they see the uh, the WoW on your car. WoW stands for Whip Em Out Wednesday. Uh, you want a sticker? No, 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 Maybe they got old timers with walkers and they just can't move around fast. Yeah. Enough to give out the wow stickers. That's right. Find an invalid, put a sticker on their mouth, have a laugh. <laughs> um, and here we go. As I said, they do not explain things, they simply assume that everyone knows them and the show. I've attached uh, it to the uh, this email so that you can see the approach we took to get the word out about wow. Please understand, we are thrilled to have these guys on this oh, radio station. Sounds it. We should we, read ahead before we talk. <laughs> we just need to get everyone else to feel the same way. <sighs> why, don't, why don't we read ahead? What? That little thing at the end was just a, That's, a make nice. Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah. That, yeah. that little thing at the end is, uh, you know, he still wants to get a paycheck. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He has to make sure, hey, no, wait, I do like these guys. Don't fire me. Yeah. Would you like I'm a, a team that's an I'm still a team player thing. Speaking of firing, Sam, if you don't bring me a spoon different than this one. What is that childlike I little blue spoon you've gotten? I don't know what this is. That is a little child spoon. It's a big it's like a it looks like a like a, like a tongue depressor, but it's shiny blue plastic with a little little a little what is it, Anthony? You're better at describing things. A little spoon. <laughs> it's, it's, what, what do I have to describe? Right, it's I'm... an awful little blue spoon with a giant handle for big Down syndrome hands. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe you should use it. Excuse me, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Would you like a wow sticker? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's wow? What are you trying to give me? Well, it's... it's um. I don't know. They haven't explained it to me. We can't make it more simple. You throw a wow in your car, girls will flash you. That's what it happens, happens every Wednesday. It happens every day at this point. See, it stands for whip them out Wednesday, but could be whip them out whenever. Maybe that's confusing. And it's also just pure support for the program. There you go. A lot of people just slap it on their cars so they can uh, show that they support the program. They listen. Eh, one of those things. And then before you know it, you're just driving. Maybe a month, maybe a six months, who knows, maybe a year down the road you're driving and uh, a girl pulls up next to you and flashes and you go, what the, who the, how the, and then you realize, oh yeah, I had that wow sticker on the back.
Right. Let's uh, let's say hi to Doug in Arkansas. Doug, what's going on? Yeah, I think what it is is they're used to their morning zoo, so you got to explain it like this. It's kind of like Prize Patrol with bosoms. It's Prize Patrol with bosoms. Oh, because they, they're used to, like, Prize Patrol type stuff. Yeah, you know, Prize Patrol, you put your sticker on your car, and they chase you down and give you a stupid prize. All right, there well, you go. Someone like, Thank uh, you, sir. Someone like uh, Tony Van Driver. Hey, my name's Tony Van Driver, and I'll be out on the streets today. Is your name Van Driver? Is it really? Is it really? Is Can I look really? at your driver's license? Because I bet it's not Van Driver. No, it's Pete Douche. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was more sarcasm, West Palm. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it wouldn't really be Pete Douche. Right. You might want to look that up in the old radio Although, dictionary. I'm sure there's people named Pete Douche, and they're probably fine folks. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure they are. All right, so we say hi to West Palm Beach this morning. Just relax and enjoy the show and, and get to know us. Don't think Slowly, so much. Slowly but surely. Don't think so much. And we'll let the listeners explain the show to uh, all those slow people at the West Palm Beach radio station, okay? Just rip it up. There'll be no global warming <laughs> argument. You want that? Go to um, NPR. Thank you. It's National Public Radio, by the way. I, I hope that wasn't people too outrageous there. for West Palm Beach. West Palm. <laughs> why did they rip? Why didn't they discuss it? I don't understand these guys. Other talk shows would discuss that. They're I, I crazy. Just I just don't get these guys. Go to a message board. Seems like they do nothing on their radio show. Go to page 810 of the discussion and uh, continue. And that's when it gets really That's when it just gets... <laughs> it, it like, you, and your mother. Exactly. Your mother's global warming. What? How about that? Yeah. How about that? Your father. No, what? Uh, a couple things going on in Anthony's life. He's got house guests, lots and lots. I got of lots guests. of house guests. I don't even know. By the way, think more is showing up today. More? Think another one might be showing up today. Oh, please, God. Could be another. Yesterday. By the way, uh, to West Palm Beach, because uh, someone at the station thinks that we don't explain things. Uh, house guests. You know, they're out of town people that come. <laughs> yeah. And they stay with you for a while, and they drive you absolutely nuts. Drive I you batty. I, I don't know if you know what house guests are all about in West Palm Beach, so we better explain that, too, to everybody down there. And Anthony likes his privacy, and he's kind of a germaphobe, and he's also a racist and a homosexual. That's right. Go ahead, Ant. Not a racist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I, got, I got house guests. I'm starting to think that guy that works at, at the West Palm Beach uh, rock station yeah. is a dope Starting? He's full of bunk. Starting to think. Guff. They don't explain anything. All right, yeah. so we'll explain everything. How many times today. have we explained that? So you got house guests that are driving you nuts, and now there's some kind of uh, uh, home invasion situation that happened relatively close to where you live. Close enough, you know. I live close in enough a to nice... get you scared, which means it happened within a hundred mile radius of your house. Right, exactly. <laughs> I live in a nice community in the North Shore of Long Island, New York, Nassau uh, West County. Palm. That means Anthony may be a little paranoid. Right. It's not paranoia if it's true, by the way. I'm just very uh, cautious. Safe. Try to be very safe. Yeah. All right, all right go ahead. That's so. what it is. And, um, well, uh, uh, I have house guests. So uh, they include children. There's three children, somewhere around five and four and two. Those and, are humans that are not yet adults. Right. They're not cooked yet. <laughs> <laughs> And they just do... Actually, they don't know about children in West Palm no. Beach, if you really think about it. What are they? <laughs> They're the ones that point and laugh at me. They wear the same diaperish undergarments that most of you do, <laughs> but they're supposed to. Yeah, but people don't laugh at theirs. Jeff in West Palm Beach. Jeff. Yes, yes Jeff. Sir. Hey. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, Good, good Jeff. Jeff. Hey, listen, we love the show in, in West Palm Beach. I've been listening to you guys on XM for years. Actually, since you've been back on the air on XM, it's the shitty radio station in West Palm Beach that does no publicity at all. Thank you for another Hold on. dump, uh, another uh, successful uh, screwing up of our dump-free day That's right, that, we had, that we had going. We absolutely want to go to XM later on and, and get the news that, hey, guys, guess what? No dump sheet today. And what happened, West Palm? You you potty mouthed that call, and now we have. Oh, yeah. But he's we'll basically blaming sheet. the radio station, saying uh, they're not promoting us enough. But uh, Jeff, if you like the show, just spread the virus. Tell others that we're broadcasting in West Palm Beach, okay? 
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, I'm sweetie. All right, thank you. Wait, See, I get people that agree with me. My new bit's coming, too. Oh, what's that? The, uh, the, the, uh, the Sudoku quiz. <laughs> oh, that segment. Stay tuned, West Palm. <laughs> 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 <Sudoku quiz. laughs> I, told, oh. I told you the Chinese are coming. It's so obvious now. Can I go right to the instant feedback, Anthony? Of course. Bill in Waterford, New York. Hey, oh, West Bill. Palm Beach. <laughs> hey, West Palm Beach. This is the Thursday episode of the Opie and Anthony Show. What does this mean? It means the Grim Reaper has avoided your sorry old ass for just one more day. Huh? The Grim Reaper? Ah, he's going with the thing where old people are in West Palm. Oh, I gotcha now. Well, we're lucky enough to talk to the youngsters in West Palm Beach. This yeah. is the Opie and Anthony Show, the ONA virus spreading across America. 1-866-313-FREE is our phone number. 1-866-313-FREE. And uh, we got to get right into this West Palm Beach situation. We, we had start on, on it, started on it yesterday. Right. Sorry, I'm typing. Hold on. I have to uh, get my instant feedback up. There we go. Yeah, we started on this yesterday. We have the, uh, I guess, the program director down there at our station in, in West Palm. He sent out uh, this little memo. All the stations that we syndicate to sent out these little uh, memos, whatever you want to call them. Like one sheets. It's like a one sheet about what what they could use to help the Opie and Anthony show uh, in general. We uh, we take our syndication very very seriously. Yes, yeah, so they, we get these reports from uh, all the radio stations we're on. And they tell us what's working, what's not, what they need. Yeah. They, they give us updates on the market, some of the promotions they're doing, things like that, just to keep the excitement level up. Right. And uh, a lot of these stations we syndicate to have gotten their ratings in, and they're very happy. They filled out these sheets, and of course, they would like uh, the ability to advertise more, uh, more um, show related swag to give away. Uh, a lot of them requesting that we do live shows from their uh, studios. They all want like to, that. They all want us to come to town. They're very excited about the show. We're doing well in their cities, and uh, they want to have us there. We're we're happy to be there, and we will show up and do live shows in your cities. Yeah, I think we're working on uh, bringing the comedy tour to Cleveland, and that uh, really got Pittsburgh mad. Yeah. But, but we haven't been in Pittsburgh long enough to really get anything going yet. So, Hang in there, Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh, we're you got to give us a little time. You we're know, we, coming. We got to develop the show a little more for you guys, and then we'll come to Pittsburgh and then and do the party thing. Okay? So Opie, I say every single one of those syndicated uh, markets that we're in have sent nothing but positive. Uh, feedback and requests for this show. I would say every single there isn't one exception, is there? Well, West Palm Beach. Let's get oh, right into it. Oh, that's right. It was blatantly West obvious Palm. that West Palm Beach, uh, the guy, the guy. I don't even know his name. The guy who wrote the one sheet. Yeah. Seems like he's not a huge fan of the Opie and Anthony show. I got to just say it. It seems I it, whether he is or not, we don't know. But this is what it seemed like to us when we read the one sheet. Right. Seemed all, like not a fan. Because all the other cities uh, with the one sheet, they gave us uh, constructive criticism. Yeah. This guy's like on another planet. It wasn't even really. And we had really enough criticism. confidence in our abilities in this radio show that we called this guy out yesterday. Yep. Just hang in there because we're getting to something that's going to make a lot of people laugh, okay? Yeah. So uh, once again, really fast, uh, under issues, questions you have of any programming or promotional concerns. This guy at the West Palm Beach station. <laughs> and, and, this, I'm, this, and I'm not talking to the listeners, by the way. We're making fun of this guy that's, uh, I think, running the radio station in West Palm Beach. We okay? love the people of West Palm, but you're a leader here at this station. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, don't get confused. We, we love the listeners in West Palm Beach. We know there's a lot of uh, transplant uh, New Yorkers and all that stuff. So uh, we, know, here's, here's we know we have an audience down there that's going to find us. We have no doubt in our minds. Here's okay? what he wrote that, like, really was kind of a little screw twist. Right. He twisted a little screw into our sides with this one. So under the issues, questions, uh, part of the one sheet. Biggest problem with the show is that they talk like everyone knows who they are. In this market, no one knows who they are, and response to the show has been less than enthusiastic. Remember, <laughs> remember has that. Has it? Remember that very line, people. <laughs> less than enthusiastic. Just wait for the cinder block to the head. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, please. 
To date, we have spent six hours in high traffic areas handing out wow stickers. Six hours? They have given out less than 30 in two weeks. Very frightening. Six hours Very in a two-week period. Six hours, two-week period, 30 stickers. Very frightening. And then he, write, he wrote, very frightening, yeah. They're, they're actually probably standing in the line of a drive through just handing it to people who go there. Right. Yeah. Uh, major request, marketing money. Uh-huh. Every uh, city wants marketing money. Of course they do. If we don't market this show properly in West Palm Beach, you could forget it. Uh, forget uh, it. Just forget it. We are no better off today than we were a few months ago. Oh, really? <laughs> are you? No better off today than we were a few months ago. Kenny is bringing in the cinder block as I speak. Doesn't he mention uh, our uh, predecessor? Uh, yes, David Lee Roth scared off a large portion of our audience, and they have not returned. They have not returned. No better off than when we were. David Lee Roth scared off people who have not returned. This guy, by the way, wrote this, and I read it um, for the first time, I believe, the day before yesterday. Yeah. Which was the day before... The ratings. The ratings came out. And we had enough confidence to call this guy out the day before the ratings key to this whole uh, Didn't statement. even know what they were going to be. Uh, we need to let these people know about ONA ASAP. This is that not as soon as possible. This is yeah. not West an Palm. option. It's mandatory. Uh -huh. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. This is tough talk. This is a guy that didn't want to put Opie and Anthony in the mornings. I'm no. convinced. Oh, absolutely. I'm this convinced. is somebody who just wanted to keep the status quo, whatever was going on. Don't take no chances. P.D. Travis, I like to call him. <laughs> All right. And then... Uh, oh, see, West Palm? See, Travis is the guy that works for us. That He's a skinny little waif-like um, woman with a male anatomy, I guess. I've never seen it, but you would you would suppose... He's a little girl, little Fiona Applebody, as Jimmy likes to call him, and he takes not a chance in the world. He's a boy, but he'll tempt any man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Travis. So uh, you want to do the wow thing first, and then we'll get to the cinder block oh, to the head? Please. <laughs> please give us the, the right. production piece. And then finally, to let people know about wow, we created a promo to explain it. As I said, they do not explain things. They simply assume that everyone knows them in the show. I've attached it to this email so that you can see the approach we took to get word out about WOW. Okay. Uh, please understand we are thrilled to have these guys on this radio station. We just need to get everyone else to feel the same way. Put on your yeah. laughing hats, but keep the chin strap loose because it could uh, dig in after so much time goes by on this promo. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, this You're going to do it all day. This is the one they did, right? Yeah. yeah. This is how he's so proud of this production piece, and this is how they're getting the word out for you know about wow. Here it is. <laughs> We're willing to bet that 99% of you have no idea what Opie and Anthony wow stickers are all about. All right, right there. Right there is another little dig on us. Well, the dig was it sounded like he was going to say, you know, you don't know who Opie and Anthony are all about. But yeah, he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But then he, he decides, you know, 99% of you don't know what wow is all about or something. I, look. I am probably the most modest, uh, realistic person about this program. I always underplay um, the success we're having. I count my blessings for it, knock wood anytime something good happens. So um, I, I never really brag about a lot of things. That's just the way I am. I, I consider us lucky in what we're doing. We're very skillful at what we do, but I, I always think of it as very lucky. Uh, this wow thing, though... I mean, come on. It's been in, in in national papers for how many years? It's the easiest thing to explain. It keeps popping up in the papers yeah. every every time they do a story on us. It's the easiest thing to explain. We explain it every Wednesday. Our wow stickers have been featured on The Sopranos and many, many TV shows. Today show, the flashing on the Today Show, and then it was explained there. It was right. it just it keeps popping up in the news. It's not like ninety nine percent of the people don't know what it is. How hard is it? It's simple. You throw a wow in your car. That stands for Whip Em Out Wednesday. Yeah. Women drive around, and there's uh, a lot of women out there that will flash you if they see the wow in your car or the back of your truck. There you go. And then we got official wow bumper stickers, but also people uh, do homemade wow signs, and they write in the dirt in the back of their trucks. There you go. There's the explanation. How right. hard could it be? Right. 
But he thinks that, uh, you know, we didn't explain it well enough, so this is his promo to explain it. Listen with, to the with, a, with a dig. The awful accent is what bugs me. Oh, wow, stickers. We're willing to bet that 99% of you have no idea what Opie and Anthony wow stickers are all about. <laughs> so in order to clarify the point, or should we say points, we'll explain... <laughs> oh, I get it. Wow is an acronym for Whip em Out Wednesday. Whip out what? You know, yabos, silos, bazongas, love melons, jawbreakers, fried eggs, cupcakes, beanbags. Go to the bathroom and come back. You have time. Sandbags, snuggle pops, milk cans, Hindenburg, globes, flapjacks, rib balloons, sponge cakes, bonkers. Cannonballs, cha chas, wobblers, bonbons, dingers, kazongas, lip pillows, howitzers, pagodas, torpedoes, fog lights, milkshakes, nibblets, jugs, corkers, twin peaks, u boats, gumdrops, whoopers, wongo, uh, tomatoes, honkers, uh, balls, doozies, jumbos, tweeters, pastries, roundies, rivets, mangoes, headsets, goombas, tater tots, charlie, sweater puffs, knockers, or whatever else you want to call them. And we guarantee that you'll see more of them every Wednesday when you put a wow sticker on your car. Whip them out Wednesday. There are very very few things that make a woman want to flash you. A wow sticker is one of them. Just remember to keep both hands on the wheel. 103.1. The Buzz. Okay, terrific. Not as bouncing all over the joint. My well, ass was wiggling, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In the words of Jimmy, or in the word of Jimmy Norton. Yuck. Wait, did you hear the, um, at the end, the, little, the wacky noise at the end? <laughs> it's almost like a wacky horn. What was that? It's like a wacky horn, like a... Yuck. Like a horn. To all the production uh, directors out there yeah. of the stations we're being heard on, yeah. new contest, send in your wow promos. I'll get Tom Chiasano to, to give a cash prize to the best one. Ooh. Cash prize to the best one, the best wow promo from uh, one of the syndicated cities. All right? Because that thing stinks. <laughs> I don't know. I like to call them funny words, like melons and bazongas. I didn't know what the, what the whole thing w was about by the end of it. No. Like, you're just exhausted. Yeah. You have to give up on it. Yeah. So, with that said, uh, we say hi to West Palm Beach this morning. Hello, West Palm. That's the setup. Here comes the cinder block to the uh, the head. Because we were very insulted by this one sheet. I'm not going to lie. Very to insulted. Because we're like, wow, A, the guy either doesn't get it, or B, he does get it, but he doesn't want to be part of uh, the Opie and Anthony you know, virus that's spreading all over the place. And I was saying um, a few weeks back, I said to Opie, I go, man, I am getting a lot of emails from West Palm Beach. Right. Which is really odd. You know, it's a market we've never been in, and I'm getting a lot of emails. And he's like, really? Uh how many? By the you way, know, it's it's so much more than any other market. By the way, early money is in for BCN to come up with the best WoW promo. Ah, uh, I got my money on WBCN. Uh, Kevin from Connecticut says you're highly motivated there. Highly Someone write an email to Tom Chiasano. I want to give uh, one of these guys <laughs> That's the some nice cash. WoW promo guy. He seems like a cool yeah. guy. He kind of looks have, like Ozzy with Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with that guy. He's just doing his job. Okay. It's a, it's not the PD. We weren't sure. Anyway. He's all right. So, Anthony, uh, the ratings came in for West Palm oh, Beach. Oh, I thought James Hetfield was doing our pr production. <laughs> okay. It's a picture of him with James Hetfield. Here's the ratings for West Palm Beach. Came in yesterday. Yes, here, here they are. Here's the cinder block to the head. Here's the uh, frightened, n no better than it was when David Lee Roth was there. Right, right. Uh... Nobody listening. They talk like everyone knows who they are. You know, things like that. And if we don't market them, um, you know, we're... Wait, what did he say? No better. Oh, oh, we need to let these people know about ONA ASAP. This is not an option. It's mandatory. Mandatory. So with that, the ratings for West Palm Beach that came in yesterday. Here's a day after we got that one sheet. Yeah, this is uh, the confidence that we have. Yeah. Buzz 1031, Florida's new rock alternative, WPBZ. Morning, 6 to 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. That would be the Opie and Anthony show. Right. Persons 18 to 34. That's the gals and the guys. That's what we're gunning for. April, when David Lee Roth was there. Okay, what did David Lee Roth have? A point eight. Point eight. So this guy was saying that... We're, we should fare no better than a point eight. Point eight. Point eight. That's not even a whole number. Remember, he said we're no better off yeah. 
than when David Lee Roth was doing mornings uh -huh. for, for his radio station. Point eight. Well, in May, which is the Opie and Anthony show yeah. by ourselves, has nothing to do with David Lee Roth. I hope it's higher than a point eight. Well, it's a little higher. Right. It's a 7.9. Bam! <laughs> right across the face. You ass. You bumbling buffoon. My calculations, we went up ten times. Ten times. We... Ten times the audience. Is there a <laughs> phrase for that? I know you can say quadruple or triple or we, double. We deca... deca something. We quadrupled it twice plus two more times than that. <laughs> you... Very concise, Jimmy. <laughs> idiot! Good call. Kreskin. <laughs> thank God, thank God, Iraq's e parents have 480,000 friends there. <laughs> you know, perhaps you should have waited a day, one more day before you put out your little, little one sheet. So, uh, once again, morning 6 to 10, persons 18 to 34, David Lee Roth got a point eight in April, the Opie and Anthony show in May got a 7.9. That's good enough for second place after 30 days. Right. Second place behind Wild 95. And we're, we're, we're coming to get you. Oh, yeah. Are just made wild. It Are they awful? Oh, they're really bad? What, what do they do? What kind of show is that? E-Rock knows the West Palm Beach radio market. E-Rock? It's a guy-girl team. Oh, boy. Ugh. Enough said. A whole. Yeah. Get us audio. Get us audio. Kevin and Virginia. Ugh. What kind of stuff they do? Uh, I, I don't remember oh, exactly what the guys. Is like a Z100 style. Okay. Oh, nice Kevin, thing. stop now. Well, That's Virginia, I'm is. just trying to be a... Oh, now, Kevin, you know better. Well, I'm just trying. You know, you're oh, right, you're right. stop <laughs> it. Hey, no, you're right. Can we get their website up? I want to see what they're all about, because now we have to take them out. Oh, by the way, it's tenfold, yes, of course. Yes. We were trying to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> tenfold. Tenfold. And then Men 18 Plus, uh, April with David Lee Roth, 1.1. May, Opie and Anthony, 2.9. There you go. Nice jump there. Uh, 12 plus, April with David Lee Roth, 0.9. Mm -hmm. May, the Opie and Anthony show, 2.1. Double nice. the audience there and then some. And persons, 25.54. Very mm -hmm. important with the advertisers. April with David Lee Roth, 1.4. May, 2.5. There we go. But we've had, there we go. We had massive growth with the younger demos. And, yep. then, and then the older demos are going to catch on as, as this continues. Yeah. We always do well with the uh, 1834 at the start, right? And then it spreads. The virus spreads. That's the that's like the host cell, and then it just spreads from there. Well, you know what? You're hacking. Your nose is running. You're puking up blood, and then you're dead. Oh wait, that's Ebola. We laughed so hard yesterday when the ratings came in. Yeah. After have to after having to read this crap. I want, Palm Beach. I want an apology. I want. A written apology, one sheet. I want him to send over a one sheet with a written apology. And not just a, I'm sorry. I want him to know what he should be sorry about. So send that one sheet back or, so he knows. Or you could give us your resignation. Right. Or resign, sir. Apology slash suicide note. Right, that too. <laughs> <laughs> just stay out of our way, really. Just stay out of our way. We know what we're doing. Yes. We got great people behind us here in New York. We're going to make it happen for everybody. They sound like they know who people know who they are. What do I we, Sorry, we don't come into a new market and start the show over. Ew, Virginia is a cougar. Is Kevin she? in Virginia, wild wow. 95.5. The Palm Beach the Palm Beaches hit music station. Okay, okay. Well, what happened on Monday? They did a can opener race. And they talked about comic book dorks. On Tuesday, they did uh, Cooper Car Squeeze and the morning show band. Wednesday, they did a popcorn stunt. <laughs> what? And a, what kind of stunt can you do with popcorn? And a bit called Massage Your Mom. Ah. Anything we can steal? <laughs> okay, Pookie. Uh, that's wonderful. They don't do anything on Thursday or Friday, huh? They're doing a kissing contest. How much popcorn can Jason eat? Who gives up? Is, uh, is Virginia a new mom? 
Is that what I'm getting at? Click here to visit Baby Magnolia's page. See the latest pictures and read the latest baby journal entries. Oh, see, that's adorable. Aww. <laughs> Please. Ugh. Well, I'm going to click on the baby journal. I can't help myself. Click on the baby journal. At 9.30. Oh, my God. We have to compete against this crap? Did now you that, look at their day as all scheduled? Now that baby Magnolia's, Magnolia is here, Virginia wanted to keep everyone updated on what it's like to be a new mom. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> stinks. There's a, I bet it stinks, Virginia. There's a picture of our first Mother's Day. <laughs> Why don't you show the blog of her husband shooting himself? <laughs> Can't have sex anymore. Magnolia and Mommy go to Mardi yeah. Gras. Do they? Oh, 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 God. This should be easy. A husband and wife team. Oh, I know they're not married, but they might as well be because I'm sure they act like that on the radio. You I see? bet he looks at all the girls and she keeps them in line. Yeah, I'm sure. Hey, look at her bazongas. Oh, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. hey. Whoa. Don't go there. I got my young daughter on a web page. <laughs> uh,. Do you see the what's coming up? No. They actually have their show structured out by the half hour. Ugh. 6, 6.30, 7, 7.30. And dirt of the day, that's important. That has to happen twice. I don't know what dirt of the day would be. But at 9.30, mm -hmm. celebrate birthdays. So at 9.30, <laughs> oh, celebrity? I thought they just celebrated a birthday. Jeez, I'm an ass. No, you're not. It's actually, celebrity's actually worse. Hey, guys, would you like to meet Virginia? Ooh. I grew up in New Orleans. Did you? A.K.A. Party Town, USA. Yes. <laughs> it's right in front of you, Jimmy. I won't look. I have food in my mouth. I graduated from high school in 1991 and went on to LSU in Baton Rouge. Go Tigers. I've been a radio gypsy for about 10 years. I've lived okay. in blah, 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 and blah, blah. I love the weather here in West Palm. Damn. Favorite uh, stuffs. It says favorite stuffs to do. Traveling, boating, and snorkeling. Write all that off, mommy. Dancing, shopping, gourmet cooking, watching TV, going out for sushi, all day trips to the movie theater, house parties, and spending time with my wonderful new husband, Pete, and baby Magnolia. Just erase everything you used to enjoy doing, and now just put changing diapers. Favorite Changing dog, diapers. pug. Favorite jelly bean, jelly belly buttered popcorn. <sighs> Favorite beer, Miller Lite. Hope you drank it during your pregnancy. <laughs> 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 Favorite fish, <laughs> the hog snapper. All right. <laughs> Favorite fish, the hog snapper. <laughs> The hog snapper. <laughs> Maybe like, there is something to this gal. <laughs> looks like she doesn't like men. The hog snapper. Favorite designer, Gucci. Uh-oh, and uh, this is trouble for a new mom. Uh, favorite ice cream, pralines and cream. And, uh, and cheesecake. And cheesecake. <laughs> That's right, Pete, get that motorboat ready. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help the lasagna belly you're hiding. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure you're 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 wearing a one-piece these days, aren't you, Virginia? I bet you talks ya. about how the celebrities all snap right back because they are personal trainers. They have personal trouble. I'm finding it a little hard to get ba rid of my baby fat. Are you? I bet you are. With your cheesecake and your pralines and cream. Wow, well, Kevin is a treat, too. Uh, we're talking about the, <laughs> I'm sure he is. the I morning it. show here in uh, West Palm Beach. Kevin in Virginia, Wild 95.5. We're in second place right now to them. Ah, oh, this is good. This is the regular guy pitch he has from the start. Yeah. It really took a long time for me to get it together. To in get life. it together in I spent life. a turbulent puberty in a small town in southeastern Ohio. In the 80s, I was defined by my cherry red moped, my love for hair bands, and my unusually sweet mullet. You didn't read that right, Opie. Oh, because of the exclamation points? I, I'm, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. I forgot. There's three of them. Right. Three at the end of this paragraph. Only Jimmy knows how to read exclamation points. In the 80s, I was defined by my cherry red moped, my love for hair bands, and my unusually sweet mullet. <laughs> <laughs> three exclamation After points. After graduation, wow. I considered a couple of options. College, roadie for Van Halen. Ah. 
<laughs> or hitman. Or a hitman. Where are you going to find that gig? <laughs> We'd like an assassin with a moped to mala. There's the guy. <laughs> this guy's wild. Did he write this himself? I eventually went to college, and I loved it. But I partied a lot. Uh -huh. People tell me I attended uh, Ohio University. <laughs> wait, see, because he was too drunk oh, to remember. people tell me. <laughs> you know what I like? I like about this. That's terrific. That's terrific. It's one laugh after another. <laughs> he doesn't stop to give that lull and then the uh, laugh dynamic. You know, it, it's one laugh after another. I had see I, I had something similar. His line is better because I said people attended me. Told me that I people told me that I attended Kent University. <laughs> <laughs> After almost four years and countless cake stands, I got a job in radio. Through years of hard work, a number of promotions, and a string of bizarre deaths uh, to rival candidates, <laughs> I was given the job as host of the Wild Morning Show. Because we're a wild. We're a wild. Okay, terrific. Oh, how wild are you? <laughs> Whoa. I... Do you got this? Because <laughs> you're not wild unless you have one of those. Ugh. I am now married to the most beautiful and funniest woman I have ever met. Kimberly, last name, who cares? She's not yet aware that I had a moped or a mullet. We have two great kids. Aww. They are twins, and one day will be highly embarrassed that their dad had a moped and a mullet. That's the key to comedy, by the way. One I'm day. You in. When you have a really awful line, use it three times. Yeah. Because it gets funnier every time. You Just know. hysterical. Oh, Just had mullet again. <laughs> despite a really bad start, I really feel like I'm close to getting it together. Favorite shows, The Daily Show, David Letterman, Around the Horn, and PTI. Favorite movies, Old School and Tommy Boy. Uh, Favorite music, anything with a cowbell in it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy stinks. Oh. Well, Wild 95.5, the Palm Beach's hit music station, you're on our radar. That's what we got to beat? We're coming to get you. Ugh. That's what we have to beat? That's it. That's it, really. We went right to second? Yeah, behind a hacky uh, morning show. Couldn't we have gone to, like, fifth and had some fun knocking some other people off? That would have been nice. This just seems too, too easy. Oh, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. After we get through with this show, this is going to be Kevin's response. Bye-bye, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> Bring like in the next hole. Hardly knew ye. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. We're really late, so we're very excited today. Uh, thank you, West Palm Beach. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, I'll get money from Tom Chiasano. We're looking for the best WOW promo from uh, the syndicated markets. And you can't play. West Palm? Whatever his name is. No, nah, the production guy seems cool. He'll give it another shot. Who knows? Maybe he ends up taking the title. You never know. You never know. Hey, uh, very good news. After the break, we got some terrific audio from the Kevin and Virginia show. I can't <laughs> wait. Our big competitors down, down in West, West Palm, Palm Beach. They, they work for what? Wild? 95.5. 95.5. We were vaulted to number two in uh, a month, <laughs> and they stand in our way. All right. Uh, Kevin in Virginia. Ah. See, people are just tuning in. you got to listen to this show a little longer. Kevin, Kevin and Virginia. Yes, it almost sounded like Kevin and Virginia. Kevin, Kevin and in Virginia. Virginia. It's Kevin and, and Virginia. And his partner on the air. Virginia. It's like a husband and wife team. They're not Ooh. married, but they kind of like have that same kind of weird chemistry like they might be. That uh, You have a morning show like this in your city. I don't care where you're listening from. Yeah. They're everywhere. And, and they USA. stink. We call uh, women in radio the whole. It's the wom woman that kind of ruins the guy's hangout time. You know, you're hanging out, you're guys, you're talking, no matter how disgusting you get. Or uh, off color. Oh, come on. There it is. You get that. That whole discussion we had about Rock Hudson and come McMillan on, and wife stop. would have just been riddled with the whole uh, voicing her displeasure. Guys, like, uh, I can't take this. I, I got to say, you got to stop. Oh. 
You know what my mom used to say about that? <gasps> now, guys, let's not make fun of people. The job of the whole is to keep the guys in check because uh, radio uh, experts and uh, PDs and consultants think it's a good thing to have a balanced show where you have a woman on there. Just oh, I'm to keep so the, sorry. I'm, I'm just trying yeah, to help, guys. To keep the guys in check. You know, when we get a little too crazy, she's got to be the voice of reason. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. No, come on. So, uh, God, they do that. I never noticed that for years. Yeah. I do these little shows on the road, and you always get the one girl just piping up. And He's Boiling it. Just wrecking it. Right when you're having fun with your friends. Just when you're getting on a guy roll. Guys! Oh, yeah. Yeah, you. that's right. She's here. You. So we did this rant on West Palm Beach Radio. Um, we killed in the ratings. It's it's way too early, but so far so good. Thank you, West Palm. It was such a huge jump that uh, it was. Yeah, we, we were amazed. Persons Very 18 happy. and 34, David Lee Roth, when he had this morning show, he did a point <laughs> eight, A point eight in April. And in May, the Opie and Anthony show with old Jimmy Norton and Frank the Frowner. Thank you, Frank, for your help. You're very welcome. I was almost... I can't think of anything to say. So just enjoy the moment. <laughs> it's okay. He's almost I'm happy, it's but like he couldn't show it. Steam. It's, it, it's okay. So uh, our show did a 7.9, was it? Or yeah. 7.9. 7. Yeah. And that's good enough for second place already in West Palm Beach. Behind... Kevin and Virginia. They're a wild ninety five five. They are now our target. We have to beat them to be uh, number one. And uh oh this looks tough. This we, oh. <laughs> They talk pretty naturally on the air too. I like this guy's voice. He's Yeah. Yeah. So we like to know our competition. Oh, um, yeah. Kevin and Virginia, we got a couple examples of their fine radio like, show. This is like going through the uh the uh, football films. When you look at the opponent, that's yep. right. Try to find some weaknesses. Whew, pretty easy. That sound is coming out of the speaker. Is their weakness? <laughs> uh, Rebecca in Arkansas. Rebecca. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Good. Up, thanks, Rebecca? Rebecca. How are you? Welcome aboard. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, glad to have you. <laughs> I think that women in radio was a good thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, there are some women out there that do appeal to the male audience. Yeah, really? Name 30. Hang out with men. Um, wait, wait, Rebecca, actually, you're a, you're a woman in radio? Um, I'm trying to be in radio. I do have some experience in it, but I Yeah. Think are you willing to get nude? Hell yeah. All right, oh, then, okay. then there is a place for you in radio. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I feel that I'm the ultimate guy's girl, you know? I like a lot of the same things that guys like and do you yeah. down on the level and i'm not worried about making crude remarks because hell we all make crude remarks every once in a while i i, I agree and i think that like um when your radio resume is written up you should have a photograph of the underside of a console with your hair stuck to it and you say this is what i did while the <laughs> host was was doing the man's heavy lifting sure, i was why not? i was under the console there you go all right rebecca we got to get to this audience so kevin and virginia this comes from their best of this is their best stuff. Hey, this is their best great. stuff they have to offer West we don't Palm have Beach. To, we don't have to sort through the uh, bad stuff. We get right to the best of. This clip is titled, Are We Normal? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the gang talk about if they've ever thrown a shoe at another person. <laughs> I kid you not. Thrown a shoe? That, that's thrown a shoe? Here we go. Okay. All right, uh, the first stat here, listen to this one. It says 40% uh, of women percent. have thrown footwear at a man. 40% of women have thrown footwear at a man. All right. Um, first of all, this guy's radio voice, it's almost unlistenable. Why? Uh, percent. And if you're Paul McCartney, it's only 20%. Oh, God. That is the exact <laughs> <laughs> mathematical ratio I was thinking of. <laughs> I just couldn't think to go with that. Or <laughs> to say, and hopefully it's Heather Mills, because at least you knew the shoe was pristine and unused. 
a brand new, still smelling like the rubber when you buy it out of the store sneaker <laughs> flying by your head. I think it's still in the shoebox with the paper shoved in the toe. <laughs> like, why even take it out of the box? Oh, what else are you going to do with the extra <laughs> shoe? Yeah, she has a whole pile of them. It's a bag full of what could have been. <laughs> My buddy got caught uh, buying two right uh, right sneakers. Really, Eddie from Big Brother. He won. All oh, right, yeah. He, he won the first season of Big Brother, and he he has only one leg. He's a he's a great friend of mine. One legged chap. Actually, I haven't uh, talked to him in a while. I got to catch up with him. But... Eddie W. Huh? No, no, no. We... Got to catch up with him. That shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> uh -huh. No, like Joe. <laughs> and he told me when he would go shoe shopping, he would like sneak the two rights into one box and got caught once. <laughs> so you get like two. That's. That's like getting two pairs of shoes if right. you're two pairs two of brand person. new sneakers. But he got yeah. caught and it was very uncomfortable for everybody. Oh, oh. I was just <laughs> right. Oops. Because uh, he would whatever. But he, he would, should be able to get like most people buy two shoes. And he, and he says it sucks because you have to buy both shoes even though you're not going to use the other mm. one ever ever ever. Mm. All right, here's uh, let's go back to Kevin of Virginia. Are we normal? Is the bit we're normal? Virginia, have you ever thrown a shoe? At a guy. I have. I learned from the best, Big Linda, who used to throw shoes at me and my sister. Oh, yes? When you're across the room and you're acting up. Wow, yeah, okay. Big Linda was quick with a pump. Wow, okay. Yeah. And uh, did okay. the guy deserve... You hear him? Ow, oh, uh, okay. But he's like, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who talks like that? Well, yeah, he does. What? Well, we're talking about if you ever had a shoe thrown at you. Shoe. A women uh, like throwing these shoes, do they? Well, yeah, yeah, they do. Fantastic, fascinator. Uh, let's go to Dave in Jersey. Dave, what's up? Dave. Yeah. Got to okay. make it fast. We're we're rocking today. Hey, Dave, man. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Is just I can't stand women who think they're one of the guys. No woman will ever be like a guy ever. Exactly. No matter what, how many guys you hang out with, never. Not happening. Yeah, Dave. Uh, it says hate when girls say I'm just one of the guys. No, you're not. If you were, believe me, we wouldn't all be jumping on you at the end of the night when no fat girls show up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Kevin in Virginia talking about throwing shoes at each other. With a pump. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, did the guy deserve it? Yes. He did. Yes, he most definitely no, he did. did. Did you hit him? I did. We were at the beach, and it was uh -huh. a flip flop. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> you need to go for like a stiletto. Yeah, Make it was like a good uh -huh. shoe. Yeah. But it was the only shoe I had. Or a clog. Uh, One or the other. Or a clog. What? This right, Marianna, what about or you? Or a clog. Oh, flip flop. Or a clog. Clog. He's terrible. Oof. Clog. <laughs> God, um, who's, how do you phony radio people out there oh. live with yourselves talking like that? It amazes me that this, this type of radio is still going on in the year 2000. A clog. A clog. A clog. <laughs> And he said, actually, oh, wow, to a flip-flop. A oh, flip-flop. Wow. Oh, wow, on it, the beach? Well, that's crazy. If you can't handle a flip-flop to the head, you got some serious problems. Yeah, and it's foam. <laughs> Isn't it flopping? Where are the <laughs> Mabel King jokes with this guy? <laughs> right. Both legs amputated to diabetes. Let the laughs begin. <laughs> Where's the Gene Gene the dancing machine jokes? <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> he lost both of uh, his legs, too. Back to the bit, are we normal? Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, throwing shoes. Where's the Lieutenant Dan jokes? <laughs> Only shoe I have. Or clog. Uh, clog. Clog. All right, Marianna, what about you? Are you uh, in the majority or the minority here? 40% of women have thrown footwear at a man. I've never thrown a shoe at anybody. Never? No. Really? Never. Her nose right, is Jason, clogged. Had a throw, uh, shoe thrown at you? No, but I've thrown a shoe at my roommate's head when he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous. All right. That was best of? Yeah, that's yeah. great uh, stuff. The first down here, listen to this one. It says 40%. Uh, 40% of... Sorry. I, I could listen to that over. I know. I would have just I could listened listen to again. that all day. His over voice. and over again. Well, the next clip, it's uh, Kevin and Virginia, their best of material down there in West Palm Beach. Good stuff. 95.5, uh, what is it again? W D U C H. Wild 95.5, <laughs> right. Okay. And boy, wild they are. They're crazy. We're second behind these uh, drum We'll never beat them. I guess the PD <laughs> of uh, West yeah. West Palm, I guess P, uh, the PD of our station down there, very nervous that we're talking about the competition. It's not in the book. Don't talk about the competition. Never address the competition. That's what I learned in PD school. The Don't. competition stinks and will give out their, their call letters and numbers. What of do course. you think of them apples? Don't raise awareness, fellas. 
Don't raise awareness. You think he's on the chalkboard? Don't <laughs> raise awareness. <laughs> awareness. <laughs> Underline awareness. That's Stupid right. PD meetings. Ugh! Put your little chalkboard away. <laughs> A, B, C. Always be closing! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, the next clip. Put that clog down. Clog. Clogs are for closers. Here's the next clip. Uh, the hole on the show. Yeah. Uh, starts crying after listening to Brokaw's final sign-off. Tom Brokaw retired a, what, a year ago? Yeah. And I guess uh, they put this up on Best Of. Yeah, and we... Uh, it's a little weepy. We played it and laughed our asses off, and mm. um, they played it, and some hole starts crying on the show. And they and they start going at it a little bit, but then they just don't have. They it. back off because yeah, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. That's right, you can't hurt anyone's feelings. Not on radio when you do a husband and wife uh, yeah. team radio show. Yeesh. There you go. Aww. Wow. Oh, I got a little choked up. I know how about that, huh? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Marianne is crying. <laughs> oh, you kidding me? Marianne, oh, wow. what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> His career has come to an oh. end. I didn't know uh, Don Wicklin was doing mornings down there at West Palm Beach. Wow, does sound like him. That's one for the boys. Going to be nothing to you guys out there, but uh, they're laughing in the studio. There you go. Aww. Wow. Oh, I got a little choked up. I know. How about that, huh? <laughs> I don't know why. Wow. Marianne is crying. <laughs> oh, you kidding me. Marianne, oh, wow. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, his career has come to oh. an end. Oh, let's <laughs> see, just forget about it. I mean, he loves what he does. He can't play anything without her starting to ball over here. <laughs> that was sad. Can you control her? <laughs> no, I can't. What is this? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm glad I didn't You're sounding like a baby. <laughs> Oh what the God. heck is going on here? <laughs> I don't know. It just got to me Get a little it together. bit. <laughs> Look at her. She's falling to pieces over here. Well, it's the news. I know, but he's going to be gone. I it's don't not know. dying. <laughs> I don't know. This is a bit ridiculous. I'm sorry. Oh. Is it your time of the month? <laughs> no. Oh, well, oh, up girls. Over. She's breaking down. It's kind of sad. And then he's leaving. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is the best laugh I've had all week. It is. The only time I want to hear her getting choked up is if their guest is the guy that makes the slap happy videos. <laughs> Brandon Iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. I get choked up too. Anytime I have to say words like Los Angeles, Achille Lauro, Leon Klinghoffer, and stupid hole. I can't even say the word hole. Stop your stop whining. I am retiring and this stupid bitch can't hold it together. I at least can go out with a little bit of dignity. And ow, someone just threw a flip flop at me. <laughs> I can't say flip flop. Flip flop. Flip. 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 Someone threw a rubber beach shoe at me. <laughs> this is Tom Brokaw. I'm I, 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 I. <laughs> What about a clog? Can you uh, say cl clog? Clog. 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 Wooden shoe. <laughs> I have got a pair of wooden shoes, pretty wooden shoes, a little wooden shoes. This is how I dance with my blues and my <laughs> pair of wooden shoes. <laughs> my sister did that in a ballet thing years ago. I don't know how it's stuck in my head. <laughs> Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. A hole cries uncontrollably at my retirement. We'll have details later. Stupid bitch can't hold it together as newsman retires. Man can't say clog. 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 And we'll have our exclusive interview with Frank the Browner <laughs> later in the broadcast. <laughs> I do miss Tom, too. Look, I'm getting all choked up. Yeah. Uh, is Tom crying over there? Our buddy Tom. <laughs> Tom must be uh, a little bummed that he's not doing the news anymore. <laughs> Retirement's got to be uh, a bore fest for you. Huh, uh, Tom? Someone got me a clean, a clean, a clean. You know where the gag goes. A, a tissue. tissue. <laughs> yeah. Of course. That old gag. It's still... Maybe it was enough. completely time to retire. <laughs> Tom Brokaw. I'm just being nightly news. 
It's the same old gag. <laughs> How can I do an impression when I'm looking at baby girl's cleavage here on Pal Talk? Hey, you're I'm able gonna, to say Pal Talk pretty I'm well. I'm going to shut that window down while I'm trying to do an impression. It's highly distra- distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she got choked, huh? Uh, Bird from Philly. Hey, Tom, what about the Christmas shoes? That very, very sad song. Christmas shoes. Yeah, that, see, that that makes everybody cry, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little song at Christmas time when there's a little, a little, little boy and he's standing in line at a shoe store and there's a gentleman behind him. Tom Brookham is in the line. He's standing behind him. And the little lad wants to buy shoes for his mother, who's dying. <laughs> Hold it together, Tom. Hold it together. <laughs> and then he doesn't have the money to do it. So the gentleman behind him actually buys the shoes for the uh, young lad and bring it home. And the mother drops dead with the shoes on. <laughs> oh, God. It's so sad. <laughs> I tried to buy shoes for my mother once, Tom. Just right the frown. She hits them across my face and says that frown is bumming me out. <laughs> <laughs> my mother fell down the stairs during pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the frown came from? I don't it? know, but she says it. She says my father was drinking, and he tried the old whoops a daisy <laughs> <laughs> That's when you make a noise in the night. When they go to investigate it, you trip them on the stairs. Doctors investigating Frank's case realize that in, u- in utero, what happened when he, his mother fell down the stairs was his umbilical cord went into his mouth much like a horse bridle, <laughs> pulling in the down position for more than six months straight, this leaving a permanent frown on his face no matter how happy he is. Do you, do you know it actually takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile? I once heard Peter Jennings say. <laughs> Who? I don't acknowledge that, man. <laughs> Stupid Canuck. Wait, aren't I Canadian? Yeah, you I don't are, Tom. Remember. I believe you are. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think you are. Actually. I have no idea. Who knows? All right. More uh, Ken and Virginia audio after the break, okay? Oh, please. And maybe more from Frank the Browner. <laughs> Frank the Browner. <laughs> He's a sad boy. He's, He's a, such a sad little he thing. He wants to smile. He's also an ass. And <laughs> Smart guy, though. Uh, <laughs> Uh, great actor. Yeah, Steve, the actor, very good. All right, it's the only oh. virus spreading across America. Do you guys want more Kevin and Virginia audio? Oh, please, a little more. Just a little more? Yeah, he makes funny shows. It's great stuff. Wow, just amazing. They're in our way in West Palm Beach. They're it. Yeah. Not for long, though. All right, uh, Levi's Mannequin ad. What's this about? I don't remember this ad. Does anybody remember the Levi's Mannequin ad? Yeah, some guy's in the store. He likes the pair of jeans, so he buys it, and the mannequin gets all uh, pissed off. So the guy oh, his follows, him home. follows him home, and it's all creepy. And, you know. and he wakes up, and it's um, standing, like, right yeah. over him, yeah. wanting his jeans back. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, good enough for a segment. No, but, <laughs> but they decided it was good enough for a segment on Wild 955, West Palm Beach, Hit Wild Music Leader, or whatever the hell they call themselves. So uh, they're talking about this uh, particular ad on their program. And then it's like raining, and you see the mannequin standing outside this guy's house, and then they cut to inside, and the guy's asleep on the couch wearing the jeans, and you just see the shadow of a mannequin standing over him, like watching him sleep. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. It's so Oh, that's scary. Oh, wow. It's going to kick in some mannequin phobias into people. Oh, good gosh, that's creepy. You um, talked over the best part. Oh, no, the... uh, Sorry, I couldn't help it. The noise of the hole. That's the only reason we're playing this clip. The noise of the hole? Every morning show that has a hole, they they make weird noises like... Ew. 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 
Uh, so we can fast forward to this? Uh, we'll yeah, just have to, it's just a quick 20 second okay. clip, so okay. let's do it again. Let's here. Do it. And then quiet. it's like raining, for, and you see the mannequin standing outside this guy's house, Ooh. and they cut to inside, and the guy's asleep on the couch wearing the jeans, and you just see the shadow of a mannequin standing over him, like watching him sleep. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. It's so oh, creepy. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Oh, that's going to kick in some <laughs> mannequin phobia. Oh. 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 He says that's mm. scary. Mm. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> Was yeah. he wearing clogs? Boo. <laughs> that's another uh, hole making Boo. the same sound. Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Boo! <laughs> I like making that sound. <laughs> I can't even do it. They don't, they don't have anything really funny to say, so they just make a noise. Boo! I wish I had with them. All right, well, more mannequin talk. This is the last clip we'll play today from uh, Kevin and Virginia. But first, Gary in Florida. Gary! Hey, good morning, boys. Hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. Anthony, that's an awesome, kick-ass Tom Brokaw you do, man. Oh, thank you, sir. That, that is sweet, man. I love it. First of all, uh, I mean, when people call up and say, you suck, I mean, you know, that's, that's, you know, come on. But no, Kevin and Virginia really do suck. It's a terrible radio station. It, it's absolutely, it's absurd. It, it's, it's never funny, and they, they laugh hilariously. It's like the, I don't know if you ever heard of Bob and Tom. It's like that crazy, stupid-ass laugh. It's, it's, it's all redundant. They suck. They, I don't even know why they're even on the air. It's, and I wouldn't consider that competition for you guys at all. It's disingenuous zoo crew crap. Well, it's not competition. I mean, uh, we're early into this game, and uh, very. <laughs> yeah, after 30 days, we went from I don't not even being rated to second place in persons 18 to 34 behind this show. So yeah, unfortunately, so we, we're focusing on them a little bit today to show people how bad they really are. We really yeah. went up the ladder pretty quickly, unfortunately, we have and to step on their faces. To get this is the one. only show left in the way. Stupid. We'd like to goof on another show, but stupid man town in Boston's not giving us a good fight, so we have no. to go after the husband and wife radio team down there in West Palm. Oh, I know they're not married, but they kind of make believe they are a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's cute. Ew. Ew. Thanks, Gary. It really is. Re it's, it's, it's horrendous radio, and uh, I never heard ONE before, and it's uh, really a pl I'm from Connecticut originally. Oh, cool. It's, re it's really a pleasure to, uh, you know, it, you guys are great. I mean, it, it's... Oh. I really no, I really do uh, like this. I like the show. Uh, thank you, man. thank, thank you, Gary. you, Gary. Thanks for calling the program. Uh, somebody uh, saying, uh, well, cigars and scotch, I guess, is a uh, diagnosed uh, Frank with having something you don't know the technical name for. It is frown syndrome. You have <laughs> <laughs> frown syndrome. <laughs> That's why the goofy haircut, Frank. I don't appreciate wordplay when it comes to my illness. <laughs> okay. You don't want to appreciate the wordplay? I don't appreciate little Can't you tell he doesn't that victimize my illness. Can't you tell he doesn't appreciate it? He yes. doesn't look happy at all. I don't know if he's happy, sad, or indifferent. I'm frowning on the outside and the inside on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so now it matches. Frank, just try to smile. Just try. I can't do it, it hurts. <laughs> I feel so sorry for Frank. When I try to smile, I strain so hard, my shoulders lift up. <laughs> <laughs> Notice that. I've noticed that for no reason, your shoulders <laughs> lift up. They lurch. It's like a turtle trying to pull his head in. Maybe you could use your hands to make a fake smile. Hey, it doesn't work. I've tried it before. Let me see. Let's see. <laughs> it won't move. Wow. My hands just slide up my cheeks into my eyes. It's, it's like a paralysis or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't want to bring up any uh, bad memories. I appreciate that. We just moved on. <laughs> Do you know it takes... Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I, well, yeah it actually, it's very factual. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. I once read an email attachment. <laughs> Poor fella. <laughs> All right, so getting back to Kevin in Virginia. They, they talked about the mannequin commercial, and then, of course, they have to have a whole discussion on mannequins. Of course they do. I wonder why there's not more people. We hear about this all the time. It's not the clownophobia, Jason. In fact, you are, you you suffer from clownophobia. Yes, you're afraid of clowns. Are you afraid of mannequins? No, I'm not. You're I, not. I own mannequin. a mannequin. 
Oh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Of course you, you own do. a mannequin. Of course you own yeah. a mannequin. Why do you own a mannequin? Well, it's kind of creepy, and you can really play some mind games with people. I I, I had one like a, like three or four years Did ago, you? and I used to put it in my mom's bed when she wasn't in her oh, room. <laughs> She'd walk in it and this mannequin in her bed. Uh, uh-huh. I'd put it in the shower. <laughs> it's great. Oh, oh my God! That's oh, what a funny. card. That's only funny if he painted the mannequin black and put a mask on it. <laughs> <laughs> Pushed it on top of her as she slept. Yes. And played like audio. <laughs> Give me your money. Falls on her and she screams. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow, that what just is- sounds like a great uh, a great show. It's going to be a rough Rough uphill climb so for many, us. So many things to do with a mannequin, and that faggot just puts it in wacky places. Yes. How about you drilled a hole in it and then punched it when you were done just so you wouldn't get arrested? <laughs> Any more of them, or was that the all of the best of... Um, oh, that that's it. Kevin and uh, Virginia. Okay. Down there in West Palm. Well, hopefully... Uh, Godspeed, you guys.